Line up the hole in the speed measuring code disc with the prong on the motor. Push the disc onto the prong. Repeat this on all four motors. Pass the motor brackets up through the bottom of the base plate. Make sure you know which end of the base plate is the front. Position the motor between the brackets with the wire side closer to the middle of the plate. Pass an M330 flathead screw through the brackets and motors and secure them with a the nut facing the interior of the base plate. Align the hole in the four channel tracking module with the slot along the front of the base plate. Secure the tracking module to the base plate with a nut and an M38 round head screw. Repeat with all four tracking modules and space them evenly along the bottom of the base. Carefully bend the black and white prongs forward. Position six of the longer copper columns on the six holes shown here. Attach them to the base plate with six M38 flat head screws. Open the battery pack and position it on the top acrylic plate. Attach it using a nut and an M38 flat head screw. Now we'll attach the copper columns to the top acrylic plate. Starting with the six shorter columns, align them with the holes shown here. Attach the copper columns to the top plate using the M38 flathead screws. Next, align the longer copper columns with the holes shown here. Attach them using the M38 flat head screws. Align the two holes on the motor drive board with the two short copper columns behind the battery pack. Make sure the blue terminals are positioned toward the middle of the top plate as seen here. Secure the motor drive board on the columns using two M38 flat head screws. Align the holes on the four channel tracking control board with the two copper columns closest to the motor drive board. Make sure the side with the 12 pins is facing the middle of the plate. Secure the control board on the columns using two M38 flat head screws. Position the holes on the servo set on top of the two longer columns near the front of the top plate. Make sure the servo motor is closest to the front of the plate. Secure the servo set in place with two M38 flat head screws. Align the hole in the ultrasonic head with the smaller hole on the top of the servo set. Using the small screw, attach the ultrasonic head to the servo set Make sure that the eyes of the ultrasonic head are facing towards the front of the top plate. Align the holes on the infrared obstacle avoidance modules with the copper columns at the front of the top plate. Attach the modules to the columns using two M38 flat head screws. Be sure to slightly angle the modules outward away from the center of the plate. Place the top acrylic plate on top of the bottom acrylic plate, aligning the front sides of both plates.
Attach the top plate to the bottom plate using six M38 flathead screws. Secure the screws through the top plate into the copper columns on the bottom plate. Using 12 plug-to-plug -plug end wires, connect the four-channel tracking module to the four-channel tracking control board. Attach three of the wires to the module Then feed the other end through the large hole in the bottom plate and again through the hole near the center of the top plate. Connect the wires to the prongs on the control board that correspond to the prong on the module. The VCC channel to the VCC channel, the GND channel to the GND channel, and the out channel to the in channel on the control board. Place the UNO R3 main control board on the remaining longer copper columns on the top acrylic plate. Align the holes in the control board with the holes in the copper columns. Make sure the word UNO is facing closest to the battery pack. Attach the main control board to the copper columns using two M38 flathead screws. Position the UNO R3 expansion board on top of the main control board. Make sure that the blue terminals on the expansion board are closest to the outer edge of the top plate. Then, carefully press the expansion board into place on the main control board. Feed the red and black wires from the motors on the left side through the hole in the top plate behind the battery pack. Loosen the screw in the blue terminals on the motor control board to insert the ends of the wires in the terminal opening. Connect the red wires from both motors to the terminal labeled OUT3. Then, connect the black wires from both motors to the terminal labeled OUT4. Then tighten the screw to secure the connection. Repeat this process on the right side by feeding the motor wires through the hole in the top plate behind the four-channel tracking control board. Connect the red wires on the right side to the terminal labeled OUT1 and the black wires to the terminal labeled OUT2. Connect the red and black wires from the battery pack to the nearest blue terminals on the motor control board. First, loosen the screw on the terminals. Then, insert the end of the red wire in the terminal labeled 12V and the end of the black wire in the terminal labeled GND. Tighten the screw to secure the connection. Using six plug-to-plug -plug wires, connect the motor drive to the expansion board. Connect one wire to the prong labeled ENA on the motor drive to the prong S5 on the expansion board. Connect one wire to the prong labeled IN1 on the motor drive to the prong S3 on the expansion board. Connect a wire to the prong labeled IN2 on the motor drive to the prong S4 on the expansion board. Connect a wire from the prong labeled IN3 on the motor drive to the prong S2 on the expansion board. Connect a wire from the prong IN4 on the motor drive to the prong S7 on the expansion board. And connect the last wire to the prong labeled ENB on the motor drive to the prong S6 on the expansion board. Connect the four-channel tracking board to the UNO R3 expansion board using six plug-to-plug -plug end wires. Connect the first wire to the prong VCC on the control board and prong V0 on the expansion board. Connect prong GND on the control board and prong G0 on the expansion board. Connect prong OUT1 on the control board to prong S8 on the expansion board. Connect prong out 2 on the control board to prong S9 on the expansion board. Connect prong out 3 on the control board to prong S10 on the expansion board. Connect prong out 4 on the control board and prong S11 on the expansion board.
To connect the ultrasonic head to the expansion board, first use a plug-to-plug -plug wire to connect the prong GND on the ultrasonic head to the prong GAREF on the expansion board. Then connect the plug ECHO on the ultrasonic head to the plug labeled S13 on the expansion board. Connect another wire to the prong labeled TRIG on the ultrasonic head to the prong S12 on the expansion board. Then connect the last wire to the prong labeled VCC on the ultrasonic head to the prong labeled VAREF on the expansion board. Using three plug-to-plug -plug wires, connect the infrared obstacle avoidance modules to the expansion board. On the right avoidance module, connect the VCC prong to the prong labeled VA5 on the expansion board. For the left avoidance module, connect the VCC prong to the prong VA2. Connect the GND prong on the right module to the prong labeled GA5 on the expansion board. and the GND prong on the left module to the prong GA2 on the expansion board. Lastly, connect the out prong on the right module to the prong labeled SA5 on the expansion board and connect the out prong on the left module to the prong SA2 on the expansion board. Connect the brown wire from the servo set to the prong VA0 on the expansion board. Connect the red wire to the prong GA0 and the orange wire to the prong SA0. To attach the wheels, line up the hole in the wheel with the rotating shaft on the motor. Push the wheel onto the motor and repeat for all four wheels. Open the cover of the battery pack. Then, insert the batteries by lining up the negative flat poles of the battery to the spring and the positive prong poles to the battery to the flat side. Then, plug the port cable of the battery pack into the UNO R3 main control board.